I have just marathon Jane the Virgin and it is my new favorite show and I just I needed to talk to someone about it and I was just like oh this is why I have a YouTube channel so I can review stuff like this and discuss it with you guys and you guys can comment back to me because I just I love this show so much I'm all caught up with like the new season and everything and I just had some things I want to talk to you guys about this is gonna be a really casual review but I wanted to start off with a non-spoiler type of review so for people who have been interested in watching Jane the Virgin maybe I can give you guys a little shove you know just to watch it because it's like it's my new favorite show Jane the Virgin is about this woman named Jane and she is on the correct path her life is going just the way she wants it to go until this pregnancy happens. She's working her way to becoming a teacher, she's working at this hotel as a waitress called the Marbella and she has this perfect boyfriend. I don't want to go into how she gets pregnant because it was just kind of fun to see how this all happened. The show is so dramatic. There's lots of twists and turns and how people are related to certain situations. It's really fun. I didn't expect this type of show from the CW at all. I mean because every single one of their shows currently, except for the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend which just premiered, has some sort of like supernatural superhero based essence to it and this is just like a real life show there isn't like any superheroes in it and there aren't you know ghosts or vampires so that's why I didn't give it a chance when it first aired but then all of the accolades it was getting and Gina Rodriguez the actress who plays Jane won a golden globe and I'm like why am I not watching this show so I'm so happy that it was put on Netflix for my viewing pleasure. Christina and I actually watched the pilot together because one night we really wanted to watch something and we were kind of trying to figure out like we're gonna watch the premiere of Vampire Diaries and then we saw Jane the Virgin on Netflix and we watched the pilot which the pilot was amazing. I think the first thing that Christina and I like exclaimed after the episode was just like wow that was a really good pilot because some pilots are awkward, people don't really know their characters yet and that didn't this pilot didn't have any of that it was just really good and I really wanted to watch the next episode and I did I watched the second episode without her because she fell asleep and I continued watching the show and now I'm done a week later <laughs> I haven't watched a show like this where it's like super dramatic it's all about people's lives and their people they love in a long time it really reminds me of Ugly Betty because of the whole Spanish thing. I mean, Ugly Betty was Guadalajaran. Jane's family, I think, comes from Mexico. It's like a telenovela, and I love that. I've never actually watched a telenovela. I don't really speak Spanish. I know some of it um, just because living in Southern California and taking Spanish in high school and working at a restaurant where half the people speak Spanish, so I kind of know, but not really. That's why I really like this like English take on the telenovelas. But if any of you guys watched Ugly Betty, that was one of my favorite shows in high school. It was kind of like junior high, high school, I was watching it. But then it ended, and then my other favorite show around that time was like Desperate Housewives, and I haven't been able to watch like a really dramatic, just real human show. I was thinking about this. I don't watch a real human show. I watch superheroes. I watch fairy tales, obviously, once upon a time. Basically, my shows are all about superheroes or fairy tale characters or supernatural beings. I'm not a big fan of the gritty shows. I think the grittiest show that I kind of keep up with is The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, but again, that has zombies in it, so it's not a real human show. There are real humans in these shows with the supernatural essence and stuff, but it's not just like, you know, just human lives with human problems. So if you have been thinking about watching Jane the Virgin, do it. It's on Netflix. It's 22 episodes long. Currently, we're two episodes into the new season, which you can watch on Hulu, so it's really easy to catch up. I highly suggest this show. Every actor in the show is amazing. There's really cute guys in it and it'll make you laugh, it'll make you smile, it'll make you cry. I've definitely, I've, I've cried in the show I think twice now. It's, it's just, it's a good, it's a good family show. Like I started watching with Christine, my mom got really into it now um, and I'm really excited for my Mondays to have a show to watch now because Jane the Virgin is on Mondays. Now I'm going to discuss some of the spoilery stuff in the show and some of the good drama. It's so good. So if you haven't, you know, watch the show yet I would leave because I'm gonna spoil everything and I don't want you to be spoiled because that's 
this so fun. So leave and come back when you have watched it. Okay, so I hope you've all watched the show. I've been talking to a couple people on Twitter about it and it's been really fun and I'm like, oh, I just I just need to put my thoughts out in a video because I really love doing TV show reviews. They're so much more easier for me to do than say, you know, a book review because it's kind of hard to do a book review for me and I can remember things visually um, a lot better than, you know, words on the page. Okay, so how Jane gets pregnant, I think I'll start off from that, um, is really funny. Christine and I were, like I said, we're watching the pilot together, like, oh, 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 I get it now. I didn't understand how a virgin could get pregnant, and science, I mean, that makes sense now. Seeing Petra in the other room with Jane, oh my gosh. The only thing I don't get about that scene is when, you know, Jane gets the... Raphael's yeah anything I don't understand how that needle was in that room did they switch the patients because she didn't take that needle in with her it was already there that was just like the one problem I saw with the show is how could that actually happen why would that needle with the sperm be in that room but doesn't matter because Jane's pregnant and she's already had a baby the biggest thing I want to talk about is Raphael and Michael I had like this really intense conversation with my mom I just like mom who would you pick for Jane, Raphael or Michael? And we just had like this serious conversation about like who Jane should be with and I don't even know why, but I'm team Raphael all the way. Team Raphael, I will always, in a love triangle situation, I will always pick the more passionate person, the more like one that you're gonna have a better life with instead of just like the safe one, like Edward say or uh PETA but PETA wasn't I mean maybe he was a more passionate one but he was also the safe one and then same with you know Emma and Killian very passionate people especially Killian and I love it I love that I want safe I want passion and the more passionate one is the beautiful Raphael he is gorgeous I just love looking at his face and when he smiles it's so cute the guy who plays Raphael he's married and has a little girl and it's so cute I don't know about you guys but I always just want my characters to be like together in real life it would just like make the fairy tale better I guess kind of like how Rob and Kristen were together in Twilight. I do see how being with Michael would might be the better option just because it's safe and he's faithful and he will always love Jane. But I think that Raphael will always love Jane as well. The only thing that I'm, you know, insecure about that relationship is his work and also this Sin Rostro character, which Sin Rostro is also connected to Michael. So they're both kind of like dangerous options, unless, you know, they capture Sin Rostro and put her in jail. So Sin Rostro, the big evil bad in the show, did y'all think it was Rose? I thought it was Emilio for a little bit, then Rose just kept kind of being manipulative and showing Raphael that it might be his dad. I love that actress. I think she is gorgeous. I know she was in Beauty and the Beast and she was also in Agent Carter, right? Oh my gosh. And then Roman Zazo. Didn't see that one coming. When like he first showed up and you saw like Raphael with him, I was just like, no, you can't be. No, you are safe. This is a safe option. He thought he was his twin brother. It turns out he wasn't his twin brother. He killed his twin brother, which is horrible because I have a twin brother. You, how, I don't know. Why would you kill your twin? That is like the person that you grew up with from womb. That's your womb mate. Did we ever find out what Roman had to do with Sin Rostro? I know he had the flash drive with all of the names of the criminals that they changed the faces on, the plastic surgeon that changed the faces on. Other than that, like, what was his deal? Because he was Raphael's college roommate. Did he meet Sin Rostro when they got married? Like, I mean, Emilio and Rose got married. Is that what happened? Or did he, like, infiltrate the family beforehand? Hopefully he won't show up again. That would be really funny if he did. That would be that would be such like a telenovela. At this point in the show, you know, towards the end of the show, I was 
really rooting for Petra because she pissed me off in the beginning of the show. I just wanted her out of the picture and she's never going to be out of the picture now because apparently she's pregnant if you aren't caught up with the two um, episodes into the new season. Sorry. She is a conniving person. Her mother is more conniving than she is. She put her mom in jail because she wanted to show her love for Raphael. That's messed up. I thought she was done with Raphael. I really did. Uh, she's not. I really want Jane and Raphael together, but here's the thing. I don't think Jane is ever going to pick, may, not ever, I mean maybe for like the next like three years, she's never going to pick Raphael or Michael because the show is called Jane the Virgin for a reason. If she got married, there would be no more Jane the Virgin. It would be Jane the non-virgin. Same thing with Ugly Betty, guys. Ugly Betty didn't get a makeover until the last season, which was the fourth season. That just worries me. Why do they have to name the show Jane the Virgin? So I'm just gonna be in constant turmoil over Raphael and Michael, and there might even be new guys that she might be interested in. But everyone's like, just, Jane should just be happy. And I'm just like, no, I should be happy. The viewer should be happy. I wanna be happy with Raphael and Jane together. They need to be together. You can fight me on this. I haven't even talked about Rogelio and Siamara. So that would happen really early in the season when Jane found out that she had a father. That was a very emotional part of the show very early on, especially when like Michael was like, you can't have this baby. And then they did like the whole wedding dress thing where like he stood back to back with her, which was really cute. But then Rogelio uh, shows up and he is hilarious. I love Rogelio. He just brings a laugh to each scene. And he really reminds me of uh, this guy I work with. <laughs> I work in a Mexican food restaurant, so half the people in my restaurant remind me of everyone from Jane the Virgin, especially of Jane's a waitress. I have so much in common <laughs> with this show, so it's really fun for me to watch. And sometimes I wish my life was like Jane the Virgin, although I don't want to be pregnant. To tell you the truth, I actually had a dream that I was pregnant. Yeah. This one night I had a lot of crazy dreams and they all had to do with Jane the Virgin and I was Jane in every single one of these dreams and the guys changed. They were Raphael and Michael or they were two other guys that are kind of I'm in, interested in. But Siomara and Rogelio are now married from Vegas. That whole like last episode when Jane was having the baby. I'm so glad that Siomara showed up. Oh, that made me cry. Especially when Jane said the same thing. When Siomara was having Jane, she's like, can't do it. And she goes, yes, you can. Just a couple more minutes of pain and pleasure for a lifetime or love for a lifetime. It was, just, it was so sweet. Oh, gosh. I was talking to some girls on Twitter and they were saying that when the assistant placed the vial of sperm, Raphael's sperm, up in the nursery that he might have switched out that sperm for his own. I'm hoping. I don't think so. Uh, that's just, that's too much to hope for. Petra had that sperm out for everyone to see because she got drunk and it was right there and Raphael was right there and oh gosh, so close. He almost got it. He almost figured it out. And the other thing I love about the show is that Jane wants to be a writer and she wants to be a romance writer, which I think is super fun. I obviously have aspirations to be a writer because, I mean, I love to read and I would love just to write like romance books. Not like those heavy, heavy romance books, just like a nice light contemporary. When the screen, you know, does like stops on, you know, an image and they have the narrator come in. I love the narrator and I love like the little like like things that it starts writing on the screen. It does like the little asterisk and then it says something else. I love that stuff. What about the season finale when Mateo was taken? I was just sitting in my bed right here and I was just like, no, no, no. I can't imagine myself waiting three months to watch the season premiere because I just went right into the season premiere which made me feel a whole lot better. I love that Shane was like, I'm going too. And Raphael's like, you just gave birth. Nope, I'm going. I love Jane. She's just, oh, she's great. I think we would be great friends if she was a real life person. And what about Andy? She's gonna come back. She is psychotic. She's a stalker and she's probably going to be a danger to Mateo as well. She's gonna wanna be Jane, obviously, if Michael still loves Jane. What if like Andy gets impregnated with Michael's baby? 
I wonder if Petra and Michael would ever get together. I don't think so. Because he's too much of a cop. He's too good. And she's again conniving especially when they had you know like that first their first little interactions when he was taking pictures of her with roman and he's like you need to end it now and then michael saved her or not really because i guess petra killed roman again er no she yeah she killed roman i mean that was the first time you can't kill someone twice natasha i love that first kiss when Jane was on the bench and like all of the petals were fluttering down. That was so perfect. Oh, I'm such like a hopeless romantic. I just, that's why I think I love this show. I just think Raphael and Jane, I mean, obviously I've talked about Raphael and Jane the entire time. I just think, mm, I just, I love it. I think that's it for my discussion of Jane the Virgin season one and parts of season two. If you guys have any theories for the rest of the season, like do you think Petra's gonna be pregnant with Raphael's baby? Will she lose it like she did the first one? Are you team Michael? Are you team Raphael? There might be a new guy. I don't know. Maybe. I hope not because Michael and Raphael are enough. Let's talk down below in the comments. My favorite moment from the entire show would probably be the kiss between Raphael and Jane or that moment between Samara and Jane when Jane was giving birth to Matteo. That was just really sweet. The only thing that I don't like about watching shows where like I want to be the main character is that like I just start wishing for all these things to happen in my life and I start having dreams oh gosh it's exhausting so thank you guys all for watching I hope you enjoyed this discussion yeah keep calm and fangirl on bye That. That's Christine's thing. I think I need Captain Swan up here just because it just looks better. There is a vacuum going on, my brother's playing games, and my neighbor is yelling. I, there's too much noise going on right now. And you guys know the actress Yale Groblos, I think that's her name, who plays Petra. She was actually cast as America Singer in The Selection. The CW, they bought the rights to The Selection by Kira Cass. They made it up the first time, they didn't pick it up. They remade it for, I think, maybe the two years ago, and Yale was supposed to be America Singer. I don't see her as being a 17-year-old girl in a dystopian novel at all.